In this video, we solve the third problem from quiz number five from the fall 2020 semester. We're asked to find the solution of the non-homogeneous differential equation using the method of undetermined coefficients. And I would probably change that problem statement uh, next time. Um, what I'm looking for is not a solution, but I'm looking for the general solution of this differential equation. So we know whenever we're solving a non-homogeneous equation, we need to solve the homogeneous equation first and then solve the corresponding non-homogeneous equation for y sub p and then put those two pieces together to get the general solution. So the first thing I would ask you to do or expect you to do is state the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. I'm using the notation d sub, de sub h to refer to that corresponding homogeneous equation. And then we want to take this and solve, since this um, homogeneous differential equation has constant coefficients, we're going to let y equal e to the mx. And then find the values of m that cause this function to satisfy this differential equation. Then y prime is m e to the mx. y double prime is m squared e to the mx y triple prime is m cubed e to the mx. And again, that comes from taking the derivative of this piece, derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of a constant times x is just the constant. So um, these are our derivatives. We'll substitute into the differential equation now. So we're going to have y triple prime minus y double prime. minus nine times y prime plus nine times y, which is e to the mx, and that's equal to zero. After you substitute into the differential equation, you wanna simplify that's going to give you a characteristic equation or the characteristic equation for the differential equation or the corresponding homogeneous differential equation. And then we'll solve that characteristic equation for the values of m that make that true. So we'll factor out e to the mx. And an exponential function is never zero. So that means the polynomial function must be zero. That's our characteristic equation. And now we wanna solve this. Since it's a third degree polynomial, we're expecting three uh, roots. So we can solve this in any way we want. Um, I see I've got two terms there and two terms over there. So I'm going to group these terms together and group these terms together and then we'll add them. And then I'll say, well, what do these two terms have in common? They have a factor of m squared in common. So let's factor that out. Remember we say to ourselves m squared times what gives us m cubed, that's an m. m squared times what gives us a negative m squared, it's a negative one. And then over here, we wanna factor something out as well. And our hope is that after we factor something out over here, we'll be left with an, an m minus one factor. So even though we have a negative nine m and a nine, and you might be tempted to just factor out a nine, that would leave us with a negative m out front. And we don't want a negative m, we want a positive m. So we're gonna factor out a negative nine. So we have negative nine times m gives us negative nine and, and then negative nine times negative one gives us that nine over there. Oops. And so now we're looking at this. And so then we look at this group and this group, that's why it's called factoring by grouping. We group to these two guys and we factor each group. And then we look at the groups and then we say, what do the groups have in common? Well, they, the groups both have a factor of m minus one this is m minus one times something equals zero. And then we just ask ourselves, m minus one times what gives us the first group? It's the m squared. And m minus one times what gives us the second group? It's just the negative nine. And that's a difference of squares, so it can be factored further to m plus three times m minus three. So we've got distinct real roots because we have um, distinct uh, factors here. 
and all of those factors have um, real roots. So the first root comes from setting that factor equal to zero and solving for m. Then we've got the next one and then the next one. Uh, this factor is zero when m equals one. This factor is zero when m equals negative three. And that factor is zero when m equals three. And then once you have m1, m2, and m3, you want to uh, state the corresponding solutions, y1, y2, and y3. Now these values of m um, are solutions to this equation. And we said that the values of m that, that satisfy this equation are the values of m that we need to have here so that y equals e to the mx is a solution to this differential equation. So when m is equal to one, y equals e to the one x is a solution. So y1 is e to the m1x. So that happens to be e to the x. And y2 is e to the m2x. And m or y sub 3 is e to the m3x. And then the general solution is y equals c1 y1 plus c2 y2 plus c3 y3. It was a third order equation. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the general solution. This is the corresponding or the solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation. Um, the complementary function or the complementary solution. We are solving a non-homogeneous differential equation after all. You might be tempted to say, okay, I'm done. That's it, it's general solution. What's this general solution to the wrong problem? Um, y1, y2, and y3 are right there. So we're just going to fill those in here. Okay, and then we go back to the original homogeneous differential equation. We had this, oops, that's a y prime plus nine y equals. And then the right hand side was 27 minus e to the x plus e to the three x. Okay, so the way we do this is we look at the right hand side and then we state the form of y sub p based on the right hand side without even looking at y sub c, at least at first. So for this constant, I would expect y sub p to have a constant term. For this constant times e to the x, I would expect y sub p to have a constant times e to the x as a term. For this constant or times e to the three x, just a one times e to the three x, I would expect a constant times e to the three x to work right here. Then I look at each of these three terms and I ask myself, is, is there any term on this list that is already a solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation? And it turns out a constant times e to the x is a solution to the corresponding homogeneous equation. So there's no way I can take three derivatives of this, substitute them in over here and get a negative x out of, or negative e to the x out of this because this is a solution to like the equation where this is equal to zero. Like they're all gonna cancel out if I just use this. So what we say is in order to cause that not to happen, I'm going to take the guess that I have for this e to the x term and I'm going to multiply by an extra x. And then I compare this to the um, terms in y sub c and I do not have an x times e to the x so that should work. And then I do the same thing with this c times e to the three x. I, I look up here, a constant times e to the three x is a solution to the corresponding homogeneous problem. So we just multiply by an x. Now that's not on the list. So this is a good guess. So we state the appropriate educated guess. And we're modifying that guess based on the form of y sub c. And then we are saying, okay, if y sub p has this form, well, what are the values of a, b, and c necessary so that when I substitute this into the differential equation, I actually get this function back. I'll figure that out. We need to compute three derivatives here. Derivative of a constant is zero. And then for this term and this term, I have to use the product rule for each of those. So we'll have derivative of the first times the second 
plus derivative of the second times the first. Over here, we'll have derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second, derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside times the first. And then if we factor out the e to the x from here, we have b plus bx times e to the x. And if we factor out the e to the 3x from here, we've got c plus 3cx times e to the 3x. Oops, that's not y sub p, that's y sub p prime. Okay, and now we want to compute the second derivative. So we'll use product rule again. This will be our first function and that's our second function. This is our first function and second function. Now we could have just differentiated this one, but that would have required just more work. So writing it in this factored form helps because then we just have to do the product rule twice as opposed to doing the product rule twice and then also having to add these extra terms. It's also going to help us with the bookkeeping when we're trying to add like terms at the very end to find the values of a, b, and c. Okay, so that's our y sub p prime. Let's compute y sub p double prime. We have derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first. Over here, we have derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second, derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside times the first. Okay, and now we wanna factor out the e to the x here. So I've got b plus another b plus bx. So b plus b is gonna give me two b. So I have two b plus bx times e to the x there. And over here, I've got three c, if I'm factoring out an e to the three x here. This is three c plus three c, that's gonna be six c plus three times three c x is going to be nine c x times e to the three x. Okay, that's the second derivative and it's a third order equation. So we need a third derivative. Use the product rule again. We have derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first plus derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second derivative of e to some power is e to that power times the derivative of the inside times the first. Oops, it's a 6c, sorry, 6c plus 9cx. Okay, we wanna factor again, factoring out the e to the x. So I've got b plus 2b is 3b plus bx. It's a b, not a d, times e to the x. And then over here, I'm factoring out e to the 3x. I've got 9c plus 3 times 6c. 3 times 6c is 18c. 18c plus 9c is gonna be 27c plus three times nine CX is going to be 27 CX times E to the three X. Okay, so we computed all of those derivatives and now we're going to substitute those into the uh, non-homogeneous differential equation and set that equal to the right-hand side. Now, because there are so many terms here, I like to add vertically in this case because it helps me collect like terms and it just makes the bookkeeping much easier. So rather than subtracting in this line, just going horizontally across the page, I'm going to add vertically. I'll have y sub p triple prime minus y sub p double prime minus nine y sub p equals, or plus nine times y sub p, um, 9y sub p prime, I think I forgot to say the prime. I'll substitute that in over here and I'm going to add or subtract those vertically. And then I will set the result equal to this. Okay, so that's the plan. And you don't have to add vertically. I just highly recommend it because it makes the bookkeeping easier. So you've got y sub p triple prime minus y sub p double prime minus nine times y sub p prime 
plus nine times y sub p. y sub p triple prime is this. And y sub p double prime is right here, but we're multiplying it by negative one. So I'm just going to take each of the terms in the parentheses and multiply those by negative one. And then I'm subtracting nine times y sub p prime. So my y sub p prime, well, that's right here, but I'm going to distribute a negative nine into the parentheses for each of these guys. So I'll have a negative nine B minus nine B X times E to the X. And then here I'll have negative nine C minus 27 C X times E to the three X. That's just multiplying each of these guys by negative nine. And then I wanna take Y sub P and multiply it by nine. And Y sub P is right here. So I had nine times A. Now there's no constant term here. So I'll put that over here in its own column. And then we've got nine B X times E to the X. And then nine C X times E to the three X. If we add all of those together, it looks like I got excited because that, that line went up. That's I've heard about something like that with random handwriting analysis. Uh, but um, if we add all those together, sorry, it's like, kind of tilted now. Um, we see that these reduce and these reduce, these reduce and these reduce. And we get this, uh, 3b minus 2b is 1b, 1b minus 9b is negative 8b times e to the x. And then this 27c minus uh, 9c is 18c, 18c, minus uh, 6c is 15c, is that right? I must have done the arithmetic wrong in my head, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, this is negative 15, negative 15 and 27 um, is 12c. Yes, I'm sorry, there we go. And then we've got 9a over here. OK. All right, so now we want to set this equal to the right-hand side of the differential equation, which was 27 minus e to the x plus e to the 3x. So we're setting these equal to each other. Now, e to the x, um, e to the 3x, and just a 1, those are all linearly independent functions. They're not multiples of each other, and there's no linear combination of two of them that will give you the third. Um, so the only way that this is equal to this is if the coefficients are equal. So the coefficient of e to the 3x here has to equal the coefficient of e to the 3x here, and the coefficient of e to the x there has to equal the co coefficient of e to the x there, and the constant term here has to equal the constant term there. So we get this, negative 8b equals negative 1. So b is equal to positive 1 eighth. And 12c must be equal to positive 1. So c is 1 12th. And 27 is equal to 9a. So a is 27 divided by 9, which is 3. OK, that's great. And that is enough to give us y sub p. So what this is saying is that if a, b, and c take on these values, then y sub p, or y sub p is this, satisfies this differential equation. So y sub p is a, which is three, um, plus bx times e to the x, so that's plus one eighth x times e to the x, plus cx, that's one twelfth x times e to the three x. Okay, so we stated the appropriate educated guess, we differentiated three times, we substituted into the differential equation.
then we um, use the fact that these functions are linearly independent to come up with a system of three equations with three unknowns. And then we solve that system of three equations and three unknowns for A, B, and C. And then we substitute those into the form of Y sub P. And then once we have Y sub P, we can write down the general solution. We remember the general solution is Y sub C plus Y sub P. So in this case, the general solution is Y sub C, which was C1, Y1, plus C2, Y2, plus C3, Y3, because it was a third order differential equation. And then we're adding Y sub P, which we just found. And all of these functions work for all real numbers. So this function, the sum of these six functions um, is the general solution on the entire real line.